figured it out by now. It's Japanese beetle season. I've seen a couple on the asparagus and a couple on the, the hops. But these are our traps. The theory is we're gonna put pheromone bait on this plastic here and they'll fly to this and then it'll drop down in there and then they'll climb up the walls and it can't get back up because it's sort of like a funnel. And then we'll have to come around and empty it every once in a while. Now, a lot of people say, well, it attracts them to your yard. They're, they're, they're not migrating insects. They don't travel very far. They stay in, their, in the general local area. So whatever we attract, it's just going to attract from this local area. They're not going to fly like 30 miles to come here. But I don't think we have as many as we usually do. But when we have soybeans, they eat the soybeans, so we never see them at all. So this year we have corn, so I'm expecting them to be heavy this year. But so far, so good. We haven't seen very many. And I think that's because we've been using a lot of milky spore. And let me show you milky spore. So this is our milky spore. We don't put this down until the fall. What it does, well, let me show you how we do it. It's a powder. And I made this little thing here with a cap on it. And you put the powder in here. And you see it's got these little holes. And then when you walk around and you tap it, just about like this. Here, here, let me show you. I made the cap so it's also a scoop because Val loses the scoops. So you grab a little milky, pow milky spore powder and you put it in this tube. cap on okay now milky spore it's a bacteria and it it attacks the grub so the best time to use it is like I said in the fall when the grubs are active you know and they're eating and killing actually you can see brown spots in uh, your grass and to be able to tell where they're at of course this year we're not gonna be able to do that because it's been so dry we have a billion brown spots but anyway, this is how this works. Let me show you. So it doesn't take very much. You just got to walk around. See how it's putting down those little pieces? So you would just walk around the yard. Maybe around a tree or something. And then on your next rain, it'll uh, goes into the ground and those grubs eat it or kills the grubs, the bacteria kills the grubs. And then the, the bacteria multiplies in those grubs and it kills more grubs. So it just keeps getting better and better. See how dry this area is right here? This is dry, but if it was uh, grubs from the Japanese beetle, this is about what it would look like. And milky spore is not harmful to humans or pets. You know how I know? Google told me. Okay, Google, is milky spore harmful to humans? Here's something different. According to Lawn Love, one of the benefits of organic pest control products like milky spore is that they're completely non-toxic to humans, pets, and beneficial insects. If Google says it's true, it's true. This large box here, I'll leave a link in the description below, treats 10,000 square feet. This one here is 10 ounces. So this is 10 ounce, and this treats 2,500 square feet, and this is uh, 2.5 pounds, and it treats 10,000 square feet. Now, they love roses. I mean, it's number one on the food chain. And I haven't... Uh, Found a one on the roses this year. So then what they do is they will meet here on the leaves. They'll mate and they'll drop. 
dig into the ground and lay their eggs. So they stay pretty close to home. One of the trees that they like to eat are birch trees. It's like their, their number one food. And we used to have a couple birch trees here. All we got is one left. And it's doing pretty good because last year they weren't so bad and this year so far so good. Now look at this birch tree. barely hanging on but we'll get them so today we're gonna we got three traps so we're gonna put one out by the hops and the apple trees in between pull them away from those two food sources and then we're gonna put one down by the roses and then we're gonna put one over by the asparagus because they love asparagus so these are ready to go now we need the bait just so happens i have some just need three very very inexpensive What you do is you peel this seal off. If my fingers are so dry, here we go. And it exposes this uh, pheromones or whatever it is. I'm gonna tell you something, these smell <laughs> delicious. Can you smell it? You take the double-sided sticky tape off the back and you just stick it on here. I always kind of push down the wrinkles because they're going to try to hold on, but everything is so slippery and they fall because they're very clumsy. And keep in mind, you're going to smell good for about a month. We're going to go ahead and we'll take, uh, we'll take this one here and put it over by the hops. They don't bother the sunflowers too much. But so here are the hops. And these are our three apple trees. So I'm gonna be kind of in between. Look, we already got some takers. See, and then they fall down. Flew away. We'll come back later and see how many we got. You always got to remember to lock the door. One time I did that and they were just coming out and going around and around. All right, the other one we're going to put over by the asparagus in the way corner over there. I'm not worried about them killing the asparagus. I just don't want them laying a bunch of eggs. I haven't even finished baiting. That's how powerful the pheromones are. We don't want them attacking all this. The asparagus.
See how they're mating? And then when they're done, they'll drop down to the ground, dig a hole, and lay their eggs. But we're going to interrupt this little uh, love period here. Now they'll fly up. Try to find some more partners. And hopefully they'll fly to the trap. You can't figure out. They're pretty stupid. <laughs> I guess they would be if they fell down in here and couldn't get out again, right? All right, we'll let these babies sit here for a little while. All right, it's been two hours. We're gonna go check the traps. I brought along a bucket with some soapy water. And they say to use soapy water because it kills them. But I use Windex, it works better. I know some are flying out, but uh, they'll just fly right back here and go right back in. <coughs> All right. That's our Japanese beetle story. Kind of gross. But it is what it is. Still a pretty good haul. Still alive in there. I'll probably add some water and some, and some Windex. Anyway. Thanks for following, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Any comments? You wanna buy some Japanese beetles? Just let me know. Have a good one. See you next one.